Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Let's start our video with another sailor's land story. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. Not clean enough. I want you to make the floor sparkle. Cut back, oh, just a bit over a decade ago now, I was a young ET3 who was at the end of their training pipeline, only stuck in limbo because somehow the damn yeoman had managed to make my orders disappear. Generally, the lull period between commands is a period of courtesy calls to the command to verify you haven't partied yourself to death and to verify you're still in limbo. Except if you have an ET1 jack wagon making your life as miserable as they can, this is not a pity story. I gave just about as good as I got. Anyway, we had a mutual understanding of complete loathing, and now that I was no longer in training nor a part of his crew, I guess ET1 saw fit to make me his personal janitor. Anyway, after attempting to be clever and having my duty the previous day be to sweep the sunlight off the walkway during the dead of winter in the Northeast, meaning I worked like four hours and went home, he was furious that his plan had backfired. So his new plan was to make me clean our workshop until it was up to his level of clean. Did the usual dust, sweep, mop, clean windows? Not clean enough. Strip and wax the floor, polish all the metal? Not clean enough. Reorganize all the tool lockers to spec, take apart all the things, removing every ghost turd, polish the chairs, fix the squeaky door? Not clean enough. It was at this point ET1 said, Do you not understand me, petty officer? This room is not clean enough. I want you to make the floor sparkle. Well, it just happens that the mechanics had this pint of two-tone powder pink and purple paint, fake glitter stuff. I didn't ask why, only found it and pretended I didn't. So I headed down to their workshop where most of the ones not on watch were bullish. I mean, holding a constructive conversation about training, and I asked them if they'd mind if I took that glitter off their hands. The usual round of... I don't know what you're talking about, but if I did, why came up, and I simply asked if they'd like to see ET1 lose his mind. He was also infamous for having a short temper. So I obtained the glitter and spent a good three hours stripping and rewaxing and buffing the floors, even polished the top of the work table. I go get ET1 again after notifying the MMs to be on standby. Well, ET1 shows up and looks around, not cleaning up. What is this? Did you just wax glitter into my floor? I respond by inquiring why he was getting so angry that I'd followed his instructions to the letter. The floor now sparkled. It was in this moment with the growing crowd and onlookers gathered who were chuckling at ET1 that I found out that a person could get so angry they changed colors. Flush to red to almost purple with veins bulging in his neck and forehead. I'd not seen such a spectacle outside of a Hollywood movie. ET1 proceeded to yell something, it was very incoherent and loud, storm outside of the smoke pit, scattering everyone who was there as they wanted none of what ET1 was now. Our CMC even came around the corner to see what the crowd of running nubs was about, saw ET1 and came to the workshop to see what might have happened. Upon seeing my handiwork, he laughed and told me to just take it easy until my orders showed up. He didn't need an attempted murder at his command. So I got to spend the next three days in relax mode, then the yeoman managed to not lose my new orders and I was off to the fleet. A floor with glitter actually sounds like a pretty neat thing to have. Not in the military, mind you, but still. And our second story. Mean girl betrays my friend and in return, I ruin her life. Backstory. Anyway, last year I started hanging out with this really fun group of girls that I met through my master's program. I was in a really bad place and these girls embraced me right away. There were about five of us in this girl group and I loved all of them. Well, I loved all except one. Let's call her Egotistical B. EB. EB was mean. EB was catty. She was the wildest girl in the group. She always wanted to party. She always showed up late at the university and she was just so fake. EB and I had the same focus in our master's program, so I, unfortunately, had to spend a lot of time with her. That quality time together made EB feel very comfortable around me, to the point where she thought she could say anything to me. In that time, she talked so much crap about every other girl we hung out with, 
I'm talking really mean stuff. She also continually belittled and talked down to me. She questioned my intelligence all the time and always tried to undermine me and make me feel less about myself. Now, I put up with EB because I loved the other girls and they could not see how toxic she was. EB also rented a room from one of the girls in my group. Let's call her Dolly. Dolly is the sweetest girl I've ever met. I've only known her for a year and she's already like a sister to me. She's the typical Southern Belle type, all bubbly personality and strong accent, but she would literally give you everything she had if you asked for it. EB regularly treated Dolly terribly, laid on rent, borrowing and ruining her clothes, never cleaning, but Dolly didn't say anything because she knew EB came from a bad home life and wanted her to feel safe in their apartment. Seriously, Dolly's an angel. The offense. In my program, all the MA students are also teaching assistants, TAs, or research assistants, RAs. So one day after submitting all of our students' midterm grades, our group decides to go out and have a celebratory drink. Dolly, however, did not accompany us because she was going over to her boyfriend's house. The rest of us headed to the Irish pub right off campus. We all had either classes ourselves or were teaching the next day, so most of us don't drink that much. My university has a real strict attendance policy, even for MA students, so we were pretty careful. Except for EB. She gets drunk, like face on sideways, rip roaring drunk. This was not unusual. EB was known for getting super drunk all the time, but she'd really been struggling with managing her TAing and her own classes, so she went for it extra hard. Two hours after we got there, the rest of us had had one, maybe two drinks, and eaten to help us stay sober. EB, on the other hand, could barely stand. Unfortunately, I lived in the same complex as EB, and since Dolly wasn't there, I had to take her drunk butt home. On the way home, EB starts talking about Dolly. This bleepsicle was so drunk that she had no filter. EB starts saying that Dolly is a dumb, inbred southern bimbo, and the only reason our faculty advisor liked Dolly so much was because she had big boobs. She also let it slip that she'd been texting Dolly's boyfriend and intended to sleep with him. Apparently, they'd been sending nudes for some time, and he'd even been sexting EB while Dolly was over at his house that night. After telling me all of this, she promptly fell asleep in my passenger seat. At this point, I'm in shock, but I know I can't let this stand. You can F with me, but don't F with my friends. The Revenge My first reaction was to kick EB out of my car, but I thought better of it. We live in a pretty big city known for human trafficking crime, and I may hate the girl, but I don't want her dead or physically hurt. Instead, I dropped her off at her apartment, tucked her into bed, and grabbed her phone. Using her thumb to unlock her phone, I first found all of the messages between EB and Dolly's BF. I took screenshots and sent them to myself, deleting the screenshots messages to myself after. Then I turned off EB's alarm for the next day. As I mentioned, my university is very strict about the attendance of their students, and I knew for a fact that EB already had at least two warnings regarding missed or late classes. The next day, EB didn't show up to the lab she taught as a TA. She called in midway through the day and said she had the flu, but unfortunately for her, an anonymous file was sent to our faculty advisor showing a video of her doing Irish car bombs the night before. The file also came with a short note explaining that the last couple of times EB had called in, she'd been hungover and lying as well. Same day, I showed Dolly the messages between EB and Dolly's now ex-boyfriend. Dolly freaked out. I'd never seen someone so mild-mannered lose their crap before, but Dolly snapped. She then told me that EB was two months late on rent, and this was the last straw. Dolly went home that night and told EB she had a week to GTFO her apartment and pay Dolly what she owed. When EB said I was a liar and making crap up to come between them, Dolly showed EB the messages. According to Dolly, the bee went silent. What more could she say? Within the next two weeks, EB was crashing on some friend's couch and she was placed on academic suspension. Apparently, her grades sucked as much as her personality. That, combined with her lying slash attendance problems, caused the university to pull her funding. I still have to see her, but now she knows better than to talk to me or anyone in our group. We pretty much all cut her out of our lives. Sometimes I feel like I went too far, but then I remember how smug her drunk butt looked telling me she was going to steal my best friend's boyfriend. And I feel much better. And our last story. Time and rank. My dad was the chief of a small university police department with about 20 officers working for him. 
There were three ranks below chief, something like corporal, most of them, sergeant, a handful, lieutenant, one. Greater rank gave greater authority and nominally higher pay, at the expense of greater responsibility and more paperwork. Seniority within rank was based on how long you'd been in your current rank and was mostly used as a tool for selecting preferred shifts and overtime. Newest in rank usually ended up working night shift and had no hope of holidays off. This one officer, let's call him Don, was generally a pain in the butt, complained all the time, tried to cut corners, shirk duties, filed grievances that were invariably dismissed as unfounded, got caught smoking at a desk in a no-smoking office while actually playing with the little bronze no-smoking sign that was sitting there. He was a corporal for a long time, eventually near the top of the time and rank list of the 15 or so corporals, so generally had his preferred shifts, whatever overtime he wanted, etc. Then he decided to take the sergeant's exam, and God bless him, he passed it. He got the rank and small pay increase and the responsibility and paperwork that came with it. He was also at the bottom of time and rank as a sergeant, which meant a lot of night shifts and holidays, as there were only four or five sergeants, but always at least one on duty. After a few months, the responsibility and paperwork chafed him to the point he asked to be demoted back to corporal. Actually, he demanded to be demoted. The phrase, this is bullcrap, was used a lot, F-bombs may have been dropped, and such language is simply not tolerated by the chief. The chief tried to reason with him, tried to explain the full implications of such a demotion, but Don kept cutting him off and demanding to be bumped back down to corporal. The chief stopped arguing and prepared the paperwork, which Don signed a few days later without reading. Note it was all perfectly normal, change in rank paperwork, spelling out the details. There were no special little gems added for Don's benefit. The only difference is that the forms were normally used to change a rank up, not down. And so Don got his wish and was bumped back down to corporal, giving up the authority of a sergeant, but also giving up the responsibility and extra paperwork he hated. He probably already knew he was giving up the smallish pay increase and went back to his previous salary, is that as of the demotion, he would become the newest corporal on the list, dead last for time and rank, and was stuck with third shift and holidays and whatever overtime nobody else wanted. And there was absolutely nothing he could do about it. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.